friends, my name is Katie. Welcome back to my channel, Life Between Words. We're going to have a little chat today about my reading goals for the year 2018, because that's the year we're in. First, though, let's reflect on my 2017 reading goal failures, of which there are many. The first two goals I had in 2017 were kind of the same thing. First was, read books I already own. Second was, buy less books. Now, I found that this goal was very nebulous. And apparently, I don't do very well with goals that aren't clearly defined. So, I failed at this really miserably. Like, I bought probably more books in 2017 than I ever had before. Book Outlet was my nemesis. Every time there was a book outlet sale, I was like, well, I have to get a ton of books because they're so cheap. And I ended up not really focusing on the books that I already owned. Now, I did focus mostly on books that I owned, but not previously before the year 2017. It was just, I would buy books, I would read those, I'd read some of the books I already owned. It was just sort of an endless cycle of buying and reading books. I don't think that the best idea for me is to go into a year and say, I'm only going to read books that I own because then I will just buy the books that I want to read, rather than thinking about whether I really want to own them. The third goal I had last year was read more classics. No, I didn't do that. I read Middle March, that was a classic. I read The Blue Castle, which was written by Ellen Montgomery, and that I guess could be considered a classic, although really kind of not, because it's not very well known. And uh, that was pretty much it. I did technically finish East of Eden in 2017, but I can hardly even count it for this goal because most of it was read in 2016, so. Yeah. Read more nonfiction. I think when I set this goal, I had in my mind that I'd read at least one nonfiction a month. That definitely didn't happen. So I don't know because did I read more nonfiction? Yes. Did I read as much as I had in mind when I wrote this goal? Absolutely not. Uh, my fifth resolution, which was to read 40 books, I did achieve. I read 52 books in 2017. So yes, one success, woo! The sixth goal I had was to read more by mood, to read what I wanted to read, and I guess I did that. I still feel like I felt bound by different things. Even though I wasn't setting TBRs, technically, I still had books in mind that I wanted to read that month, so I might as well have set TBRs. So I'm gonna say that I failed at that goal too. I wanted to reread the Anne of Green Gables series last year. I read two of them, but there are eight. So, fail. I also wanted to finish my Harry Potter reread. That was also a failure. I got very close. I finished through the sixth book. All I had to read, I'm pretty sure, was the fifth, sixth, and seventh book. I read the fifth and sixth. I did not read the seventh. But I still want to. But it's no longer 2017, so fail. I wrote this down also, although I'm not sure I put it in my video last year. I'd have to go rewatch that, which maybe I should have done before filming. Oh well. Um, I wanted to read more literary fiction, which I think technically, yes, I did do that, so that was another success. Two successes out of nine reading goals? Pretty sad, pretty sad. Okay, let's move on to something a little happier. Let's talk about the goals that I have for 2018. I gave myself tighter guidelines where I needed it and looser guidelines other places. This year, I extended the number of books that I wanted to read by a little bit. So the reason last year that I set my goal at 40 was because I knew I was giving birth to a baby. And for all those of you who've ever given birth to babies or have babies in your life, uh, they're kind of a time suck. So I was a little worried about how many books I would be able to accomplish in a year. So I set myself a really reasonable goal of 40. This year, Wilder is turning one in a few short days. and. While he is still a time suck, and having two is a lot busier than having one, I still read 52 books last year, so I set my reading goal on Goodreads at 52, which is about a book a week. That's pretty reasonable. I think I can probably manage it. Last year, setting myself a goal of buying less books didn't do anything for me. It was too nebulous, it was too undefined. So this year, what I'm doing is I'm saying, I need to read three books that I already own, and by already own, I mean were on my shelves before 2018, before I can buy one book. So that's read three before I buy one. And so far, I've 
failed. But, but, I've only bought one book. I'm about to finish two more books, which would put me at that three marker. So, so far, I've done okay with that. Okay, get ready for an excuse. The reason that I've already bought a book before I've read three of my own is that I bought the book The Immortalists by Chloe Benjamin. This book has been going around everywhere on Instagram, and I know that Olive from a book Olive has read it. I don't know if anyone else has. I haven't seen it, but I found out that Chloe Benjamin is from my hometown. She lives there. I also found out that she was hosting a book signing and a reading of The Immortalists, and I couldn't pass up that opportunity. So I bought myself a copy, and I had it signed. I don't regret it. And you guys, look at how beautiful this cover is. It's so beautiful, and I don't know if you can tell, but there's little inlays of gold foil in here. It's just a stunning cover. From here on out, I suspect it will be smooth sailing because I really was not tempted to even get a book before that opportunity came along. I don't plan on buying any more books the rest of this month, so I will certainly meet that goal this month. It's very reasonable. There are a couple of exceptions I have um, to reading three of my books before buying one book. The exceptions are series that I already own some books from, like my Louise Penny series. I don't own all of the books in the Louise Penny series. I'm going to allow myself to get those books as I come across them. The other exception are books that are sent to me. Um, I'm going to continue my book of the month subscription, which I pay for myself, and I'm going to continue receiving page habit books. And who knows, perhaps I will receive a few books from publishers I never have before, but maybe if I reach out to them. Other than that, I'm going to stick to not buying more books before I've read three of my own, because I would like to see the number of unread books on my shelf go down. My third goal is to start a books-only Instagram account, and I have. So if you are already following me on Instagram, I've changed my personal Instagram to katie.zig, which you're welcome to still follow me there. Mostly I'm just going to be posting pictures of my boys, which my boys are really cute, so I don't blame you if you want to follow me just for them. But um, if you do want to follow me on my books only Instagram account, it's life between words. Pretty easy. It's the same as here. I, you know, have that name across all of my social media accounts. I'm having a lot of fun with it, and I'm on there pretty regularly, way more regularly than I'm ever on Twitter. I know so many booktubers are on Twitter, like that's how we communicate with one another. I'm really bad at Twitter. I've never been good at it. Instagram is just more my speed, so that's where you'll find me more often if you want to communicate with me. Not that, like, if you communicate with me on Twitter, I'll respond, but I'm not usually perusing Twitter in my time off. The fourth challenge I'm giving myself is to do the Modern Mrs. Darcy Reading Challenge. I've always wanted to do it. She usually gives really good prompts, and the reason that I like the Modern Mrs. Darcy Reading Challenge more than like the Pop Sugar one or even the Book Riot one is that it's easily accomplished. She only gives 12 prompts, which is basically a book a month, and because I'm not reading like 100 books a year, I know that I can do this. I've written down the 12 prompts, and I've also written down some books that I think might fit well with the challenge. I can read them off real quick. One is a classic you're meaning to read. The second one is a book recommended by someone with great taste. Number three is a book nominated for an award in 2018. The fourth is a book of poetry, a play, or an essay collection. Next is a book you can read in a day. Six is a book that's more than 500 pages. Challenge number seven is a book by a favorite author. Challenge number eight is a book recommended by a librarian or indie bookseller. Challenge number nine is a banned book. Challenge 11, a memoir, biography, or creative nonfiction and then challenge 12 is a book by an author of a different ethnicity or religion. In terms of other books that I'd like to read this year as part of my New Year's resolution, one is to read the Emily series. I love Ella Montgomery. I feel like I can't consider myself a true Ella Montgomery fan until I read Emily. Some people like it more than Anne. It's probably going to be hard for Emily to beat out Anne be just because of the nostalgia factor of Anne of Green Gables for me, but we'll see. I would really like to reread the Chronicles of Narnia. It's been many years. I read them as a kid, and then I read them again in my early 20s as an adult, and I loved them and got way more out of them as an adult than I did as a, than I did as a child. So yeah, I would like to reread the Chronicles of Narnia. And kind of going along with both of those bookish goals is in March. I would like to do a little bit of a readathon. I was inspired by Nonfiction November that is hosted by Olive from A Book Olive and 
couple other people, I can't remember who right now, but anyway, along those same lines, I am a middle grade reader, and I so often forget about the middle grade novels on my shelf. So in March, I want to, to do something like middle grade March. Tell me if that's something that you would be interested in, and I might try and find one or two other people to host that with me if there's any interest. If not, I'll just do it myself and that's fine. I also have so many book of the month books on my shelf that I have failed to read. I really like to focus on reading more of my books of the month, so I'm gonna try and do that. Read at least one every month if I can, although I may have already failed at that this month, but over the course of the year I would like to see at least a handful of my books of the month being read. And then finally, a little goal for my channel is that I would maybe like to try and do a few reading vlogs. Let me know if that's something that you'd watch. I love to watch reading vlogs on other people's channels. It's one of my favorite things. And I've never tried one, so that's another sort of goal of mine. And those are all of my goals. They are not quite as nebulous as the ones I laid out for myself last year. I may still fail at a few of them. Hopefully I will stick to them more closely than I did my 2017 goals. I think the one that I would like to stick to the most this year is to read three of my own books before buying one. That goal means a lot to me and I think I'm going to focus most of my attention on that. If a few of the others go by the wayside, like if I, like if I don't read all of the Chronicles of Narnia, that's probably okay. Those were all of my bookish goals for the year 2018. Let me know what your 2018 reading goals are. Maybe let me know the goal that you would like to stick to the most, that you're gonna put the most energy into. I would love to know. And I hope that all of you are having a great day. I will talk to you later. Bye.